Hey, it's Scott again, and I'm making a long time coming uh, video here at Thrift Store Vinyl Finds 19. You know, it's been almost a year, really, since I made a, a, a regular vinyl video, and it's not because I, I didn't want to. I've, uh, as you can see from the beginning, I've accumulated a lot of finds that I haven't shown, some pretty interesting stuff, um, like, like 140 discs over there and uh, but I, I'm just going to show you a handful of things that I found uh, in just the uh, last couple days because recently in, in recent weeks uh, pickings have been pretty slim but like I said I have this backlog of finds from like the last several months and uh, for various reasons I I for technical reasons computer problems and things I haven't uh, been making many videos but I, I have this big um, kind of backlog of ideas that I want that I can finally uh, put on uh, to make videos and I have this big up, uh, pent up desire <laughs> to uh, to get to make stuff I know I've only made like a, a couple like I made like three or four like for the last like three or four months but I actually made those on my simpler computer and I'll probably make a video um, on my my frustrations and my kind of my love and hate for this technical digital world that we live in and uh, you might find that interesting too but that's a future video but let's get into the the finds I, I made a like I said I'm only, I'm only gonna show a handful of things that I found just in the last couple days in fact one is on the day that I'm making this video and it's a uh, I'm calling it a real killer find and I'll I'll, I'll let you know why Later, and I'm actually going to show you a brief demo of the, of this uh, turntable I have be behind me here. I, I've I've gotten this a few months ago, and it's kind of like it's a really nice turntable. It's a dual. Now, dual. I'm just to briefly tell you um, they're well known for their mechanical um, manual type turntables, but this one I found. Um, this is actually a belt driven one and it's an actual it's a changer it's a automatic changer and you can and I'll I'll briefly show you you know I'll briefly play a record on there to, to take out to uh, take off the end of this video or to take off the end of that 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 whatever but anyway let's get into the vinyl here um, like I said fines have been pretty pretty thin and uh, but I just had this feeling if I just to keep if you keep digging look through everything and I mean everything because you never know what you're gonna find but um, to start it out I found uh, I'm not really really into Alan Parsons project much into the progressive stuff and I mean when I was younger I was into like the moody blues and and Genesis and and maybe like yes and some of those others maybe and since then I've kind of like warmed up to groups like Rush I've you know in past videos I've shown I think I have almost every early Rush record at this point in fact even in some future videos I, I'll show you some ones I've gotten but anyway I found a copy here of uh, of iRobot and it's like it was at Goodwill for a buck and it's like mint condition. Um, something I know, and actually, if you see this, I actually know where this is. In fact, I've I've actually been here. If you, some of you may know where what this is, this is uh, the terminal at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France, of course. I've actually been here. I've actually gone through these things um, back in the, back in 1978. Um, my mom and my myself and uh, my my two siblings we we went on a, a European vacation and we actually went to we went to England we spent a week in England and a week in uh, France and we when we flew from London t to Paris this is this is the airport we arrived at which was Charles de Gaulle Airport so that's a little little piece of trivia for there anyway I haven't played this one yet and uh, but. I said it's mint condition, so yeah, it should be worth worth listening to. Uh, next one here. I think I have now completed every 
my collection of uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, um, Stills, Young Band, Stephen Stills Solo, um, Crosby and Nash Duo. I mean, but this is probably the last one that I finally found it. This one here, um, it's called Wind on the Water. I haven't played it yet, but it's also in mint, con looks to be in mint condition. Uh, the jacket and the disc, so it's nice to complete that collection. Uh, there's another guy. He's well known in Canada. Um, I've gotten most of his records also through through the years. Um, this one I didn't have though. Um, it's uh, Bruce Colburn. Colburn, I'm sorry. Resume. So I don't know if this is like a live thing. I haven't played this one yet. But like I said, it's also in, appears to be in mint condition. It's on Millennium. The other Bruce Coburn ones I have are on, uh, I think it's a Canadian label. Or I think it's a subsidiary of maybe an American label, but it's, it's on the True North label. There's like this little arrow or whatever. It's like a brown label. Um, this is affiliated with that, I think. Um, another performer. This uh, record I didn't have. I think this is probably one of her most more recent uh, records. It was uh, uh, Juice Newton. And you probably know she's kind of like kind of like pop pop country or something. As you can see, it's still in the original. It's it's open, but it's in the original. It's still got the shrink shrink wrap on it. So I couldn't pass that up. I got this one just just today on RCA there, and it's in mint, mint shape. So I think I gotten. I think I completed my uh, my Juice Newton collection by now. And this is kind of a neat find. Um, this guy's, I think this guy's been around since the 60s, and some, you might hear a couple of, of his uh, tracks, singles, on like uh, oldie stations or classic hit stations, but we're talking, uh, we're talking Joe South, and this is Greatest Hits, Volume 1, and he was, I really like, like some of his stuff, I mean, like games people play, um, I think my favorite track here is, uh, which one is that one now? I'm, blah, 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 blah. yeah, games people play, I guess. Walk a mile in my shoes. I remember that one. That one you don't hear too often, but that was kind of a big hit. Um, I remember um, when it came out. But I played this one. It, it's in excellent shape. Plays great. So it's glad to have that one. I might have some other stuff by him in my collection. I can't recall now, but but. Uh, the big find here, though, a uh, quick story. I was, uh, I went today, or the day I'm making this video, I went to the Vincent de Paul first. I usually go, I usually shop or go on a Friday or a Saturday when I get off of work because I work second shift. So I usually, when these stores open at around nine, I'm usually, I usually show up there because it seems like that's when they put uh, new stuff out. Kind of wet my whistle here, excuse me. But anyway, this morning I didn't really find anything at the Vincent de Paul, although they had some new records in a little section. They have it like in a shopping cart with a date or whatever. But they didn't have really anything worthwhile. Then I went to the, the Goodwill, which is like just down the road by me. That's where I found these other couple of these other records that I showed you but um, I didn't find anything there and I thought of just going back home you know I mean this is a Saturday and I had to work I had to work um, Friday night into Saturday morning so it's like an extra day or extra night this week at mandatory overtime so I my weekends are kind of pretty short anyway but I thought no well I didn't find anything and I didn't want to like have nothing to show for 
my trouble. So I, so I went to this other Goodwill, which is close to where I work. Um, so it's like in a way I had to drive back about 15 miles um, to this other Goodwill in the direction of where I work. And most of the time they don't really have that much there, but once in a while they, they'll have like a, 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 it's like you're mining and you're, you know, you, 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 you just, you, you keep drilling and you just come up with a rock and, but sometimes you, you hit a vein of gold, you know, and, uh, they just, they don't really have much of a, of a selection. They have like a table that's maybe, oh, three by three or something but this table was like shoved against into like a corner in a wall <clears throat> and they couldn't and I it was kind of hard to like go comb through everything so I had to like pull pull the table out a little bit to get around to get because I couldn't like go to the opposite side and 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 comb through stuff but anyway I didn't really you know I came you know how you always find all those same old um, records like all the old uh, Firestone Christmas Carol records and the Montovani records and the you know the Herb Elpert you know going there's always a copy of Going Places in there every single copy of Going Places has gone to the thrift stores to die but anyway you know all those kind of those same kind of records but anyway I had reached the very end of of the one row and the record from the second to the last record and it was facing the other way was a Jerry Lee Lewis record and of course we know Jerry Lee Lewis he's he's the killer right so anyway I thought I looked at it and I thought well it's in pretty good it looked to be in decent shape and this is the one it's uh, Jerry Lee's greatest. And as you can see, I'm going to tell you something about the jacket. The jacket did not look this good when I got it, but I, I, I kind of like uh, was able to like clean it up a little bit without damaging it. And I'll tell you what I did. But anyway, um, I'll show you the disc here real quick. I've actually played this record right before I made this video. It plays, I hadn't really cleaned it. I probably could, should clean it maybe a little bit because there was a little like kind of like maybe like static pops and things or whatever. But anyway, you can see it looks, it looks pretty darn clean. And there was, there was only like two little scratches. One scratch was like at the end of um, side of, of the last track of side A, but it's only pops for about 10 seconds. And there's another kind of a, a long scratch. I don't know if you could see it. Maybe right there. Right there. But that's a superficial one. It doesn't, it, it isn't audible, luckily. But anyway, I thought maybe I had a collector's item here and so first thing I did when I got home I looked at my uh, my uh, American Records book and I've shown this book I recommend anybody who, who looks for vinyl records at any you know rummage sales thrift stores I've said this in other videos too I've shown this I've shown this please get something like this because even if you if you're not like a collector who thinks he's gonna like buy it, you know, and sell records or whatever, it, it helps to find out what you have. That way, if you ever want to get rid of records, you know what what you would get rid of and what you may not want to get rid of. But anyway, um, this record is uh, it's a mono. This was only out in mono, and it's an original record. From 1961, so it's it's almost as old as I am. I'm I was born in 1960, so this record is like 50, 
52 years old, and it's it's only available in mono. It's SLP 1265, and I'll try to hold this up to the cam, my webcam here. Maybe you can see that at the very top. But anyway, this record in near mint shape will go for $200. A collector would expect to pay $200 in very good plus, you know, $100. I would honestly say that I I, I would expect a collector to, to actually, you know, I would ask maybe $150, $175 for this, for this album. Now, I would just want to show you real quick what I did to the jacket here. When I first got this record, there was a lot of like, uh, kind of like wear looking, you know, like like some, some other stuff had been like on here and in other areas here. And being this is kind of laminated, I found that I, I, I thought I had nothing to lose, right? So I took a, like one of these little, your little kitchen dishwashing scouring pads with the scouring side and the sponge side. And I just dampened it, right? And I, and I just took maybe a tiny, tiny bit of dish detergent, wetted it, and then wrung it out real good. And then I just kind of lightly kind of went over the areas that were that were bad and miraculously I not only did I not damage this but I removed that that crud off of there and there was also area here too and an area at the bottom here now one mistake I did make though I went on the other side and there looked like some kind of water there was some pre-existing um, I don't know if it was water damage or something, but I tried. I tried to do the same thing. Well, the problem is when I when I went over the the black lettering here. This is kind of more like newsprint. This is obviously plain paper, right? Well, it started to smear the ink, so I quick stopped doing that, right? And I just kind of like tried to gently undo what I did there. But it it looks about the same as as when I got it. But like I said, this is. You know, this is a collector's item here, and it's in collector's shape as far as I know. So, so all I know, all in all, I would say that I made a a killer profit from my one dollar, you know, investment here. You're talking, like I said, but I played this, and I love, I love this record. It, you know, it's the essence of the primal wave of of rock and roll, of uh, rockabilly. Wasn't really a huge Jerry Lee Lewis fan, but I become much more of a fan um, playing this record. You, I don't think you can get these tracks. Maybe that's why this record is so valuable. You can't get these tracks on those uh, re-releases. I've I've actually come across, and I've actually shown, I've come across those uh, late '60s uh, re-releases that he did. Golden Hits, I think they're called Golden Hits 1, 2, and 3, maybe. I, ha I think I have Golden Hits 1 and 2. But according to my book, uh, those, those uh, albums are only worth maybe $15. And those came out in like 1969. So uh, all in all, you know, it's like I said, you never know what you're going to find and keep combing uh, through those. Uh, you know, you got to go through a lot of crap to, to find something really good. And, you know, I... I I really feel for a lot of people who who comment on my videos and say, you know, we don't have anything, you know, all we find is, you know, junk in, in our area. Well, you know, a lot of times you'll you'll go, in my case, I'll go weeks and weeks and weeks and not find anything. But I'm not obsessed, you know, with with finding stuff as much as I used to be. <laughs> because I, I just have too many records now. In fact, the ones I showed at the beginning. I literally do not have a shelf space yet. I have to find space, and I've been combing through my collections and trying to take out duplicates. If I find a better one, a replacement copy of something I have, I'll I'll just re-donate the one that I have. And I've 
I've, I've given up about 75 records in the last oh three or four months I think just to just to make space so so without further ado I'm gonna show you uh, my other turntable here this is the turntable I got at a an antique shop where I also find it's in town here and I also find like some other records and things I've I've shown uh, it's a dual 1237 and uh, as I I know it's made in it was made in the former West Germany of course before the reunification of East and West Germany probably in the late 1970s and unlike most dual turntables of that vintage this is actually a belt drive it's not a mechanical gear drive and it's a it's a changer and uh, it has two spindles here it has a, a manual spindle that just presses in there it also has and luckily all this was complete too it's got your little 45 adapter and it's also got a a changer spindle and I'm for this video I'm not gonna not gonna put it in there um, because of time constraints but this actually presses in and turns and you'll put a record on here and it'll it'll I had it upside down <laughs> it'll, it'll drop down and play but when it reaches the end it'll just repeat now I think that's the way it works with the spindle whereas with with the manual spindle it'll it'll automatically play and then stop and then go back and and stop or you can actually start it by manually lifting the tone arm and putting it down so there's two different ways basically to do it in the manual mode I initially paid uh, $75 for this and it needed a belt it had a belt but it was I re always replace the belt belt ran me twenty dollars it had a cartridge in there but the actual stylus was damaged it was like bent and I was originally just gonna buy another stylus over the internet but I found out that a stylus for this cartridge um, would have ran me like like a hundred dollars just for the stylus because because the cartridge I still have the cartridge it was a kind of a very high end it was it was made, meant for playing quadraphonic records actually so I decided just to order a different cartridge and I and I bought this Audio Technica uh, AT110E and this is a very good cartridge it, it ran me I think uh, 70 75 dollars and it works really nice in here so that's the dual 1237 and I'll I think I'll put the Jerry Lee Lewis record on there to take out take us out this video before it gets a little too long. So for Thrift Store Vinyl Finds 19, thank you for watching, and as always, keep it groovy. Bye for now.